Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for another midweek message. If you remember the last time, we talked about how every human being is born into and living in the hopeless condition of sin. We all need someone that is bigger and stronger than the power of sin to help us. And the only one who fits that criteria is God. He is not only able to rescue us from our predicament, but also actually wants to save us. So what is it that God is doing in this act of saving? Salvation is one of the most important themes in the Bible. God's desire and action to rescue humanity from sin and death can be seen from the beginning in Genesis after the fall or the leap, as I called it last week, and it goes all the way into Revelation. And I think it's important for us to avoid the mistake of thinking that salvation is a single event where we say a prayer and simply acknowledge Jesus dying and rising again, when actually salvation is more of a process. And like a lot of things in theology, this process has a fancy name. It's called the Ordo Salutis. In English, the Ordo Salutis means order of salvation. The order of salvation involves a number of steps. And the first one that we'll be talking about this week is the step of election. Now, even though it's been a chaotic year, it is still an election year. And every American citizen has not only the privilege, but the responsibility to choose who will assume leadership of the country. We'll begin to hear debates from the candidates. We'll observe their political history we'll probably begin to research their professional and personal background. And based on what we find, each person will choose to vote for the candidate that best represents their personal preferences and their convictions. Not only the candidate's character and qualities, but also what they say will be weighed heavily by the voters. And we don't question this privilege to choose even though it's a little unique in comparison to other countries in the world. An interesting thing is we're not the only ones that choose. God also elects or chooses. It's one of those aspects of the salvation process. In Genesis 25, Isaac has two sons, Esau, the firstborn, and Jacob, who was born just after. Now, God chose or elected Jacob as the inheritor of God's and his covenant promise that he made to Abraham and Isaac. Culturally, it would normally go to the firstborn, which is Esau. But because of that promise that he made, this is how Israel becomes God's chosen people through Jacob. Now, when we elect a president, we base it on his or her qualifications, their worthiness, and their effectiveness in office. But God elects his chosen ones based on his grace and his goodwill alone. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 through 6 says, For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he lavished on us in the beloved one. See, we inherited Adam and Eve's sinful nature, and it can be evidenced in the sinful acts that we all commit. Romans 3.23 and 1 John 1.8 tells us that no one deserves the eternal reward of heaven, by their own merit anyway. What we actually have earned was eternal separation from God. But by his mercy, God shows compassion on his chosen ones. Romans chapter 9 shows us that God indeed does have the divine authority to choose. It says, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it does not depend on human will or effort, but on God who shows mercy. See, there's nothing we can do to make ourselves more savable or more worthy of going to heaven. 
but it's only by God's grace alone that we are chosen. And for that, I'm very grateful. Well, that's all for now. Next week, we'll talk about two more aspects of the Ordo Salutis. One will be calling and the other regeneration. Until then, be blessed, brothers and sisters.